Praise the Lord. Well, good morning, all. all. Good morning to all of you on Zoom and those that are in the house. Happy Father's Day. Thank Amen. You. Happy Amen. Father's Day. God bless you. It's so good to see you. Amen. And you're a father now, so happy Father's Day to you. It's amazing. But guess what? We have the ultimate father, right? For those that, you know, maybe your father's not around or, you know, maybe he's deceased. We still have our father, our heavenly father that loves us even more than our earthly father does. Amen. So I'm privileged to be here this Sunday morning, and um, I'm going to open up with a quick word of prayer, and then we'll get started. Amen. 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 All right. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you, God. We thank you for this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for all of the fathers today, oh God. I pray that you would bless each one of them in a special way. Anoint them from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, Father God. I pray that you would teach them your ways, God, your ways of fathering, oh God, in the name of Jesus. It's not a small task. It's quite the opposite, God. But you, in you, we can do all things, oh God. And so I just ask you to teach them and bless them, God, and just let them know today that they are loved, God. And we just thank you for this hour, God. We thank you for the word, God. We thank you for your word, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you would touch me from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, O oh God. Cause me to speak what thus saith the Lord on today, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that the words would fall on good ground and spring forth in due season. In yes, Jesus' name, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. and amen. Praise the Lord. Ah, we're here again. So we, um, this year, I am blessed to teach out of the book of Joshua, another powerful book. Um, it's been pretty amazing so far. And this word today is um, specifically for me. I don't know who else it's for, <laughs> praise the Lord, but it is amazing. And so if there are people in the house going through things, people on Zoom going through things, this word is for you. Amen. So who in the house is not going through anything? Raise your hand. All right, so I don't see any hands raised, Zoom land, so that tells me that at least the house the word is for, and I'm sure you'll get something out of this too. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if I were to title this message, I would entitle it, It Will Cost You, Are You Willing to Pay the Price? Amen? So turn in your word to Joshua 3, and we'll get started. We have a say amen. All right, starting uh, Josh, Joshua 3. When Joshua rose early in the morning and they set out from Shittim, and they came to the Jordan, and he and all the people of Israel and lodged there before they passed over. At the end of three days, the officers went through the camp and commanded the people, as soon as you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God being carried by the Levitical priest, then you shall set out from your place and follow it. Yet there shall be a distance between you and it, about 2,000 cubics in length, and that's just a, over about a half a mile. Do not come near it in order that you may know the way you shall go, for you have not passed this way before. Then Joshua said to the people, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua said to the priest, take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on before the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. And the Lord said to Joshua, today I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, 
so I will be with you. And as far as the brink of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand in the Jordan. And Joshua said to the people of Israel, come, hear and listen to the word of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, here is how you shall know that the living God is among you and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the um, Gargashuites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites. Hopefully I pronounced those right. <laughs> Behold the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth is passing over before you unto the Jordan. Now therefore take 12 men from the tribes of Israel, from each tribe a man. And when the soles of the feet of the priests bearing the ark of the Lord and the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off from flowing and the waters come down from above shall stand in one heap. So when the people set out from their tents to pass over the Jordan with the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people. And as soon as those bearing the Ark had come as far as the Jordan and the feet of the priest bearing the Ark were dipped in the brink of the water, the waters coming down from above stood and rose in a heap very far away at Adam, the city that is beside Zaran and those flowing down towards the Sea of Abra, the, the Salt Sea, and were completely cut off. And the people passed over the opposite Jericho. Now the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood formally on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan. And all Israel was passing over on the dry ground until the nation finished passing over Jordan. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God his, and his word. So if you, who, who likes history in here? Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. We got some hands raised in the house. So the cool thing about history is you can look back on past events and you can It can help guide what you do in the future. Amen. Amen. And so in history, my my youngest, she's taken um, American uh, U.S. history. That's right. In college, um, mm -hmm. she's doing the running start program. And she said, it just makes me mad. You know, some of the things that they talk about in our U.S. history, all of the things that we as African-Americans have gone through, she just gets mad. But I'm like, you know, we need, we need to learn from our history so we can drive a better future. Amen. So if you know anything about history, you know about the 13th Amendment. Hopefully everybody in here knows about that. The amendment, when it was ratified, marked an important uh, milestone in our country's history. That amendment um, abolished slavery. Amen. And when that happened, the gates of all slavery across the South were thrust open, and many of slaves took advantage of the freedom that was provided for them. That's a no-brainer, right? Right? If I was a slave, I'm out of here, right? But what is super shocking about that is the realization that there was also many slaves that in their own way said, uh, no, uh, yes, but no thanks. <laughs> there are many slaves that decided on their own accord to stay in bondage, to stay on the plantation. The reason for this is that slaves had calculated because they had felt ill-equipped for freedom that somehow that freedom came with a price tag. Amen? These slaves, right, wrong, or indifferent, found comfort in not having to worry about things like where they're going to stay. You know, they didn't want to have to worry about shelter. They didn't worry about, um, they didn't want to worry about how they would be clothed, how they would feed themselves. How would they get money? So these slaves, as history would tell us, 
chose not to take full advantage of that freedom that was given to them. Amen? So let's listen because this is going to drive in the spirit. Amen? Because they were un they were just unwilling to pay the price um, because they knew that it came with a price tag, right? And so such is the truth of life. Amen? That every promise comes with a price tag. And for every dream, there is a cost. So we see that in this text, lurking on the other side of the Jordan in the people's viewpoint was the promised land. Years before God has shown up to Abraham, the father of the Jews and tells them, I have a great land for you. I've carved it out for you. And then in Genesis, as Genesis closes and Exodus opens, they're in bondage. God speaks to Moses through the burning bush. The bush was burning, but was not being consumed. And he says, I want to tell you to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. So it's the time for the great emancipator. He said, I'm setting you all free. Amen. So then we go to our current text. And finally, it's the time for them to walk in the promises that God has laid out for them. It's a land flowing with milk and honey. I've got good things up. Laid up for you, saith the Lord. But guess what? It's going to cost you something. Amen? Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. It's going to cost us something. Amen? You ain't going to get this free and easy. And as our late bishop used to say, skipping through the tulips on a bed of ease, that's not realistic, unfortunately. So you're going to have to trust me to lay claim. That this is what God is telling them for what I've ordained you to have. And the price tag is called the Jordan River. So we have to be really discerning as Christians who we listen to. Because a lot of theologies or preachers, you know, they talk about the name it and claim it. And yes, I believe we have to be careful what we speak, right? Because um, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So I always tell my kids, like, like they're talking negative. I'll be like, don't say that. Don't speak that over yourself. Don't speak that over yourself. Only speak positive things. Amen? Amen. Amen. Only positive. Regardless to what the situation is, speak the opposite. If it's negative, speak the opposite. Amen? And so you see it cover to cover all throughout the Bible. Yes, God has things laid up for us. And yes, he has a future of a good future of with hope, right? But it doesn't come easy sometimes it, not everything's super easy right so god tells abraham i'm gonna make you a great multitude for you but guess what it came with a price tag infertility amen you're gonna have to trust me in this thing amen and how about joseph he gives joseph a dream i promise you I'm going to put you in position. I'm going to give you power and influence. And the whole world is going to flock to you. Amen? Guess what? Price tag is going to, guess what happened? He got lied on. He got talked about. He got betrayed. betrayed. He, for, he got forgotten about. He was put in the pit. But guess what? He rose to the palace. Amen? And then we come to David in 1 Samuel. And he tells, God tells him, I'm going to anoint you as the next king. But by the way, that didn't happen for 15 years. And there's someone that's going to be blocking you. And you're going to have to learn to deal with them. And their name is Saul. So first Ephesians, God says, I have a promise and an inheritance stored up for you. 
But that came with a cost with Jesus Christ. And his, he, he paid with his life. Amen. He came down to earth and dwelled among us so he could understand what it was like to be human, A, but then also to die for us so we could have eternal life. So he died on a hill called Calvary, and that was the ultimate price tag. The Bible is clear. Every promise has a Jordan River. Amen. Every promise has a price tag. So God is blessed. Um, we, you know, He talks about blessings and more blessings coming, but it ain't gonna come easy. There's a cost to it. Some of you might want to start your own businesses. I mean, I started a, a small business a few months ago, and it's it's there's a cost to it. Not only financially, but time. Amen, which I don't already have enough of, and it's overwhelming at times. Amen. And at times I don't feel like I'm doing, but I'm moving in what God told me to do. Amen. Some, so many people want a great marriage, but they just don't want to put in the work. You are not going to have a phenomenal marriage and literally do nothing. You know, it's kind of funny because when you're single, you want to be married. And when you're married, you long for those single days, right? But it takes work. It takes effort. Amen. And there's none of this, oh, 50-50 stuff. Is that in those that have been married or in marriages, it's not 50-50. Sometimes it's 100 and the other person's at zero. Amen. But that's just the way it is, right? We put in our all, right? Amen. Some of you might be going to work on Monday. And and you know, and you know that this is what God has told. I mean, God is, has something else for you, right? You're like, certainly this is not it. But you go ahead and walk into that job because you're not willing to pay the cost because you know that if you have to pay the cost, like if you want to pay the cost, it may mean switching a career, right? You might have to go back to school. You might have to take a temporary pay cut. Amen. But that's where faith comes in. And we have to be super keen in our hearing. And that's why mom, Mom and dad preached a lot about getting the Holy Ghost because some things you have to hear, be able to hear God, right? And there's always distractions around us, and but you have to have his spirit so that you can hear and hear his leading on when and how to do what. It's very, very important. Amen. So, you know, it's funny. <laughs> Some folks have been called to do certain things for God. And then you ask them, well, what are you doing about it? And they'll say, oh, I'm just waiting on God. But guess what? God's waiting on you. Amen. Amen. You don't just get to the promised land unless you have your feet wet first. But the problem is, we don't want wet feet faith. Does that make sense? We don't want to put in the time. We want it cheap and easy. We want microwave a microwave God. And, I, and I'm speaking to myself. Amen? You want microwave godly kids. That ain't going to happen. It takes work. You got to cultivate that. You got to talk to your kids. You got to lead by example yeah. and even with that sometimes they'll still make their own decision but as long as you the word says if you train them up as a child as they should go then when and when they get older they will not depart god's spirit is still over them and you have to trust that god has them 
We want a microwave business. It takes work. It takes time. It takes sacrifice. It does not happen overnight, and there's a cost. Amen. I know uh, Sister Cherie, she's doing her business. She has a few businesses going, and she's seeing that it takes, I mean, she already knows this, but it takes financial, it yeah. takes time, amen, and it doesn't happen overnight. And even with my business partners, I say, I'm planting seeds today for a harvest tomorrow, amen? So I know that one you know, small step at a time, eventually I'll get to where I need to be. But the key is taking action. Does this make sense? Amen. There is God and there's the people. The people can obviously see the promised land, but there is one problem. The opposition is the Jordan River. And if you study up on the Jordan River, they'll tell you that um, during this time, it was like springtime. And so the, the mountain, I think it was, uh, what was the name of the mountain? Is it here? Hold on. Yeah. Or, no. yeah. yeah. Um, you know, the snow's melting. Mm -hmm. It's like an El Nino season. It's spring. So you're getting the runoff from the mountain and the, the, <laughs> the river was off the chain. It was at this height, okay? And um, that was their opposition in the story. You know, in, in stories, there's always a, what does they call it, a protagonist and an antagonist. So a, a, you probably know about this in your philosophy studies, but um, a good and a bad guy, right? So their opposition was the Jordan River. Amen. So verse 15 says, it's, the time of year when the banks overflow, imagine that. Mm -hmm. Only the water is the only issue. But during that time, it makes it even more treacherous, okay? So the text tells us it's overflowing and the people are camped out by the Jordan for three days. Like in throughout the Bible, it's like three is the magic number <laughs> to a lot of things, right? And so that's pretty interesting, that number uh, three. Amen. And so um, the people were probably contemplating during that time what they would do. I mean, I was envisioning myself being at the Jordan River and it's like, okay, Sister Eileen, we're standing at the Jordan River and I'm like, ooh, how are we going to do this? I might step one toe in, I might step one toe in and then see it go down and then put my foot in more and I'm going further and further down and I'm like, oh boy. I don't know how this is going to happen. How are we going to do this, Pastor? <laughs> what are we going to do? I don't know. I would have been tripping. Like, uh, this is this is tough, right? But we see the promise is right there. But how are we getting there? Okay? So we got to figure out how we're going to get there. So the people were, you know, like I said, contemplating for three days and they're faced with this opposition. So I imagine the Jordan River um, is like, this is like issues in our own life, right? Things we come face to face with. So day one, they probably prayed about it. Amen? You know, they were hopeful. And then day two, they probably prayed, but maybe with not as much fervor. <laughs> this is how we do as Christians. Mm -hmm. And then day three, maybe they stopped praying altogether because they're like, man, I don't know what we going to do. We ain't been praying. It ain't a microwave situation. <laughs> they didn't have microwaves back then. This is not a microwave situation and I'm, I'm concerned. All right. So the Jordan River represents the things that we have camped out in front of our own life. What impossible things in your life have you gotten comfortable, so comfortable with that you've stopped praying about it? Yeah. Right? You probably started off, you know, got a prophecy. 
prayed about it. You was it on fire, excited. You probably even, some of you who are into journaling, journaled about it, wrote it all out. But because God didn't move on your timetable, that dream in you began to die. And maybe it went dormant. Because your Jordan River has become bigger than your God. Three days. Close up personal with this Jordan River. So my question would have been to God, like, man, couldn't you have made it easier? Why do we have to go through all this rigmarole? <laughs> we learned that the promises of God don't come easy. Why? Um, because if they did, guess what? We would develop spiritual amnesia and we would think we did it. And God wouldn't get any credit for the blessing. <clears throat> so God will put us face to face with opposition that is bigger than us, that is bigger than our resources, where we don't see a way out. So once you get through it, you'll know that it was him and not yourself. It wasn't your intellect. It wasn't the education level you have. It wasn't what you look like, amen? that it was truly God. If it wasn't for the Lord on my side, where would I be? There is another reason our text says in the promised land, there are seven nations occupying God's promises for his people. And they're not saying Israel can't, is coming so let's get everybody get out your for sale signs and let them come on in <laughs> no they would have a fight on their hands what god wants is almost like a, what we would call in a football a preseason game so that we can fight we can already have a win under our belt so that it, you can draw some confidence from that previous experience, amen? So even with my team at work, we have these things called sprints. And during a sprint is two weeks long, there's a body of work that needs to get completed during that time frame. And the whole team commits to getting that work done during that given time frame, amen? So it's important that they all work together, amen, and get it done. Amen. But teams that continue to miss their deliverables, we talk to the leadership and we want, we say, we want this team to get a successful sprint under their belt because that builds confidence. Once you get one win, you're like, okay, I'm feeling good now. I can do the next one. And this is what we do in our business. So this is what God. He, he wants us to get some wins under our belt so that we can have confidence. And we know that he's going to make us, make, help us through the storm. God wants you to use what you've been through to give you victory in the next situation you face. Amen. So when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about obviously different individuals were coming to me um, as I was doing, you know, looking at all of this. And I thought about our pastor prophet when him and his wife and family had to, well, they moved to California. So that was a big step for them. And I mean, we've never really talked about it in depth, but I assume it was a little nerve wracking because you're literally picking up, moving your family to a different state. Yes, you've been there, but even that could cause some level of stress, right? Because, okay, would I had to come back before because I had, you know, my dad was sick, so but now we're going back, and I want it to be a, a win, right? And so it took faith to do that, right? Leave all your belongings, just bring your personal things, and get on the road and move. That's a big deal. Or our um, Pastor Harris, when mom handed the baton, you probably, I mean, we didn't have any idea that was going to happen. But God knew, God wasn't surprised by it. 
And so here you are, and, and you, there was probably a little bit like, oh, I don't know if I want to die. God, I didn't sign up for this, amen. But you went with what God was leading you to do. And then I remember a story that Sister Cherie told us that happened years ago, I thought the camera went out, um, that happened years ago where she um, was, to, God told her to literally like, quit a job. She had to quit her job and she didn't have anything lined up and step out on faith. Amen. But see, the key to all of these stories is that you have to hear God. Don't go on your own without the Lord. Amen. So such in my own life, I signed my name off of a house that I was co-owner on without really having a solid plan. I mean, yes, I'm do doing the activities, right? Mm -hmm. But you know how house deals go. They, they can fall through and the 11th hour. But you know what? In my knower, I have faith. Like when, when you have the peace of God, you, you're not even worried. You ain't even tripping, right? Amen. So if God brought us through all of those things, he will get you through this. What is your Jordan River? God wants us to use our past battles again to make it through. And our battles could be health crisis, financial situations, stuff going on in the family. You know, it seemed like there's always something. But there are three things that are gonna help you make it through. So hopefully you guys are listening because what you said earlier was that everybody in this house was going through something. Yes. So take a mental note or get your pen and paper out. <laughs> okay. So there was the Ark of the Covenant, which was, they described it as a like a wooden box with two cherubs or angels facing each other. They were gold. And inside the box was filled, was a tablets filled with the law and Aaron's rod and a, a pot that represented the manna. And the manna was what they, God was giving them to eat when they were in the wilderness for the 40 years. Remember manna, is this, what is it? And it was like, right. yeah, some type of bread, something coming right. from heaven, right? All right. we know is it was good, good food, but even they complained about that. But anyway, that was on uh, the Ark of the Covenant. So verse three, as you see in the Ark of the Covenant, the Lord your God being carried by the Levitical priest, then you shall set out from your place and follow it. So God is saying, don't jump into your Jordan River without me, because that box was symbolic of God's voice in his presence, right? So don't jump into your Jordan River without him. He's saying, my presence is everything. There can't be any victory without the Lord. You need God. All right? We all need God. Okay? And Keon, just because you... You know, you come in, you're starting to come. Don't think we all got it together. We all have our own issues that we're dealing with. We, even though we've been in this thing some years, right. none of us are exempt. Right. So, you know, you can go to God and be completely, let it all out because he knows everything anyway. Amen. 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 And that's what I love about God because we judge folks as human nature. I don't say we, but human nature, right? But God sees the part. Yes. Amen. And he will continue to help us along and encourage us. And as we get, you know, get a little bit closer, he'll say, come on, you can do it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Yes. So, so some people might say, okay, so his presence was the Ark of the <laughs> Covenant. But that's not true. Um, you know, someone might say, well, so we got to find the Ark of the Covenant? No, we don't. <laughs> that was for back then.
But now we have that Jesus died and rose for us. And when we received him into our heart, we have God's spirit in us now. So we have his presence living in us. Are we going to tap into that presence? So what makes us so special? It's not the color of our skin. It's not the length of our hair. It's not how much educational degrees we have behind our name. What makes us so special is God living in us. That's what makes us special. So I have a story. Um, last year for my birthday, I went down to L.A. with the Turners to, um, you know, spend a long weekend, have some fun. And um, one of the things I, you know, I, I love Michael Jackson. <laughs> He's like, that's who I listened to growing up and stuff. And so, you know, we went to various, we, I, I wanted to book a Michael Jackson tour. And so, you know, this woman toured us all over LA and showed us different sites. And it was pretty cool. Went to uh, some of the, the, like his music uh, studio and some of the places he lived. And, you know, there's, uh, there was a, a place, one of his child or his, not childhood homes, but as he was kind of, young adult homes where he had it where he lived with his family that we went by and there wasn't i mean it was nice but it wasn't there wasn't anything overly particular about the home home it was just but you know people flock there and they take pictures and why it wasn't um they don't come for the externals of the home they come because of who once lived in the home who their whose presence was in the home and likewise, what makes us special is the presence of God in our home. Amen. So God's saying, when you go to the Jordan River, don't go without me. If I get through it, I must follow his presence. Some things God ain't calling us to, we calling ourselves to. So we got to discern who's doing the calling. Verse two, consecrate yourselves. He's saying before you, um, he's saying before you enter um, this bad boy, meaning this Jordan River, you must consecrate yourself. So the word co consecrate means to wash, to purify, to make clean. Amen. And the idea of this word was, um, you know, found in this text. Um, it's a, a command. It's not, he's not giving you a suggestion. or as some advice this is actually a command to consecrate yourself so remember we're on part two so we said part one now we're moving to part two this is to help us get through to our Jordan get through our Jordan all right so we're gonna consecrate ourselves so this word wasn't used only in reference to cleansing of garments but was also used on how we should steward our sexuality amen so if you turn your word in your word to Exodus 19 uh, verses 14 through 15, it says, so Moses went down from the mountain to the people and consecrated the people and they washed their garments. And he said to the people, be ready for thy third day um, and do not go near a woman. Amen. So what is he saying? He's saying there, you will never get through your Jordan and the promises of God while living as in sin. So what does that mean? I mean, what it means is like, we're, we've all sinned, right? None of us are exempt from that. But what it means is living a life of sin. You know, there's this new thing where I'm gonna do me, right? People talk about I'm gonna do me, but you can't serve God and do me at the same time. So that's what it's really saying is that, yes, we are all sinners, right? We are, we've all sinned, but we want to live upright and try our best to do what we need to do to live in God and through God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So an example, you know, God is saying he's going to bless. Let's say he's going to say he's going to bless you with a home, right? Um, so God says, okay, you know, you're like, okay, I received that. I'm going to go get my house. But you go to apply for the home, you go through the process and your credit, because of your credit, you get a denial. 
And you're like, man, why? Because you made some poor decisions that affected your score, that's why. Which means that you can't access fully what God has for you until you first deal with the bad decisions that you have made. God has a perfect will for your life, but you will never access it until you lean on his Holy Spirit and consecrate yourselves. So what areas of your life are you putting a tr no trespassing sign up to God? Certain areas of your life you may say, um, God, you can have that, you can have that, you can have that. that but that right there, you can't have that. And we've done, we've all done that at probably some point in our Christian walk. God says you will never um, get through your Jordan until you follow my presence and consecrate yourself. So over the last few chapters of Joshua, the opening chapters, you know, there's instructions like in chapter one, there's instructions, instructions, instructions. And then chapter two, their strategy, you know, sending the spies to the land and coming back and telling them about the land. And so when we get to chapter three, which, which we're in now, verse 14 starts with, so when, okay? Are you following me? So when, so you've done these things, so when? And what I would say, it's like, now what? Now what? So they plan, they plan, plan, plan. Um, the people of God are ready now to act. So let's come down to earth. So I've done this. I know people like this who um, they get down into their planning things in their life. They're strategizing things in their life. But guess what happens? They suffer from we call it analysis, analysis paralysis, which you're so analyzing a situation and you're figuring it out and you got your roadmap and you got your blueprints, but you're still not doing anything. You've planned. And so God is saying, when is your so when, when is your so when gonna come? It's time to act. And what does that mean? It means to have courage, right? Because we're not going to always see the full picture of what God has promised for us. He's going to say, I'm going to bless you with an amazing job, right? So what does that tell you? It tells you, you got to go out and take action. You might have to create a little resume or you might have to go and figure out, okay, what places do I really want to work? Maybe I want to, um, you know, I don't know, work over here. Let me go fill out an application, right? But you don't know how long that's gonna take because when I worked for the bank and God told me specifically, get out of this bank because it's a rebellious house. He spoke right out of his word. Mm -hmm. Guess how long it took me to land the job at World Vision? A few years. It was like a year and a half to two years before I landed the job. And I was pounding the pavement. I mean, sometimes finding a job is like having a job, a second job. Uh -huh. So that's the key. We don't know how long it's going to be, but there at some point you got to move. You got to take right. the action. You got to stick your toe in the Jordan River, right? But you know, a lot of us don't want that wet foot faith. We think it's going to fall out the sky. Okay, God, you said this. I'm waiting on you. Well, he's waiting on us. Amen. Praise the Lord. So it's time to act, it's called is call courage. God is always bigger than our capacity. If it wasn't bigger than your capacity, you know, those dreams, those things God has told us, we wouldn't need him. We mentioned that earlier. Courage is needed when your dreams are bigger than your capacity. There's always that gap in between. Amen. So some, at some point you have to say, I've analyzed it to death. I've planned it out in my head. I've dreamed about it. I've prayed about it. I've cried about it. I've done all these things. And we have flipped it over and examined it. Now it's time to act. 
but it takes courage. Even if that's one small thing you can do, like Sister Cherie used to walk on the word in her shoe, because she had a promise from God. I don't remember all the details about it, but she wrote the word in a scripture and put it in her shoe. But it takes courage because you have to trust God. And sometimes we are always looking out what externally it looks like. But if God has told you he's going to give you the provision to accomplish that thing. Amen. So at some point you got to tell God, man, God, this looks crazy, but I'm going to follow your presence. I'm going to consecrate myself and I'm going to try to live the best life I can live. And I'm going to follow you. And then I'm going to say, so when? There was, um, in 1939, Finland came out against the Russians. Um, Russian, the Russians had, like, I don't know, this was a part of the Winter War. Um, I don't I guess it's a, maybe a part of World War II. I'm not really sure. Um, but the Russians had three times more soldiers. Um, they have 30 times more aircraft and 100 times more tanks and arsenal. But to everyone's surprise, the Finns held them off. So um, according to an author, the Finns have something called a sisu. It's, it's a compound of bravado and bravery, um, of ferocity and tenacity of the ability to keep fighting after most people would have quit and to fight with the will to, to win. Um, the author calls it Sisu, God calls it courage. You will never occupy his promises until you put your God to the test and exercise your courage. So I would encourage you today to stand up against Jordan River, take his presence with you, consecrate, and then say, so when? And that's all I have for you today. Thank you. Amen. 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 For the word this morning, that was powerful, Sister Tracy. Thank you for sharing with us this morning. You know, the book of Joshua is one of my favorite books that I like to read because of all the amazing things that happen in that part of scripture God showing himself to be God to the people that he has called to be his own but you know as sister Tracy opened up this morning she asked a question you know, you know how many of us are all going through something facing challenges in this world and I'm sure that everybody is dealing with something or another uh, that you're working your way through. But the key is that we're gonna have faith in God and his promises that he has made us to carry us through these things. She gave us our study this morning out of the third chapter of Joshua, which I would encourage you to go back and read it at your own leisure for this is basically a picture of the nation of israel god has called them it is now time for them to claim the promise that he made to them and all of their prior ancestors the time is at hand it's time to put the promise into action. She said that you know, these promises and even the promises that God has made us, it will cut, or her title was, it will cost you. Are you willing to pay the price? Let me read it again. It will cost you. Are you willing? to pay the price. 
You know, when I think of that, Sister Tracy, you know, I, I relate it a lot to, to business mm -hmm. or career or uh, those that pursue higher education that want to become like a doctor, a lawyer, engineer, whatever the profession might be. There's a cost to it, not just a monetary cost, but a cost of, of time, mm -hmm. commitment, lifestyle. Because see, as you're pursuing these dreams, it means that maybe you're going to have to give up some things that maybe you are accustomed to doing in order to pursue uh, this career, this dream, this small business that you have a desire to establish. It takes sacrifice to achieve a lot of these things, which is what God was showing these people because see, he brought them to the brink of the Jordan River. And he told them about the inhabitants that were on the other side, that he was gonna be with them to help them to drive out these people, but that he was not gonna do it on a silver platter. He wasn't just gonna open up the river, chase out all the people and say, here you go. There was a commitment that was to be made on their behalf, that if they wanted that land, then they were gonna have to go in and drive these people out, knowing that God had their back. And anything that we do, that we know God has called us to do, we know that God has our backs, but we've got to go in and do the work. She talked about, you know, those that like history. History is one of my favorite subjects. I like to look back, see what was done in the past, read about different individuals, their struggles and triumphs and how they overcame and, and made it to become who they were. But we can also use history like a rear view mirror. We can look back and see all the different things that were done in order to better prepare ourselves for the future. She talked about the 13th Amendment that many of us should know, but we probably don't. But that was the amendment that freed us from slavery. And, you know, this coming Monday, you know, as she talked about it, you know, for some, you know, that was a big step for a lot of them. They were so happy not to be enslaved and wanted to get out and pursue life on their own with this newfound freedom. But for others, it was not so easy for them because they, they were so used to having the plantation provide them with housing, food, clothing, security of knowing that you know, they were gonna be taken care of. But for others, it was an opportunity for them to, to get out and to experience this newfound freedom. But tomorrow, you know, we celebrate June 19th, which is new up here because a lot of Northern states, Western states, they really have no idea what that holiday is all about. But see, if you grew up in the Southern half of the United States, it has significant meaning. Basically that, you know, even after this amendment was passed and the slaves were freed, that there was a small portion in Texas that they didn't get the word of, uh, of this newfound freedom until two years after the fact. Mm. They were free, but they didn't know it. Mm. And so they set aside this day as Juneteenth, the day of reckoning that these people realized that they were free to enjoy the freedoms that this country provides. But see, some might acknowledge it, receive it. And what's really sad is that we live in a day and age where 
most of our younger generations, they really don't know the history you know, of where we come from, the struggles that our ancestors or prior generations suffered through to give us many of the opportunities and privileges that we have today. But she also said for every dream, there's a cost. You know, we can dream a great idea, but unless we put it into action, it's never going to become to reality. She said we have to watch the things that we speak. Thoughts are real, and thoughts become reality. The scripture says, so as a man thinketh, so is he. You know, if you want to or aspire to, to grow to new heights and great achievements, you have to talk like that. And not talk down to yourself. Then I can't do it. I don't see how. Well, if God has called you to it, he, he is the how. And he is the means. But we have to believe and trust him that he will do it, just as these people believed and trusted. You know, as Sister Tracy said, they sat at the river's edge for three days. And I'm sure the thoughts were going through their mind as the river was raging and the spring waters were flowing. And it was overflowing the banks, and they were probably looking at this thing and wondering, now, now the, the, the promise is on the other side, but how do we get to the other side? But God is trying to show us, trust him. It's not about what we see. It's about what we don't see. For greater are the spiritual things that we cannot see than the things that we see every day. We just have to trust God that he will make a way. She said that Joseph had a dream when he was 17 years old. And that dream took multiple years for it to come to pass. But see, the key with Joseph is he never gave up. He believed in God, that God was going to fulfill or manifest that dream of his. David was prophesied upon, anointed at an early age to become king. But it took, as she said, some 15 years for that promise to manifest. And all the trials and, and the issues that he had to endure to be able to step into that promise. She said every promise has a Jordan River. It has land and have it has obstacles to overcome. That doesn't mean that God is not going to fulfill the promise. He just said there's some things that you're going to have to deal with. She talked about marriage. Every day of marriage isn't a day of bliss. There's some good days, some not so good days. Some days when, speaking for myself, you know, I find myself out of sorts with my wife. And I got to make it right and keep on moving. But she talked about how those that have jobs and you're aspiring to be a small business person, that's a big step because it means you don't have a steady paycheck anymore. It means you're stepping out on your own. You've got to figure it all out in order to be successful. I can remember back when I was in business and I heard a lesson from this uh, visiting minister that came to our church and he preached a message. He said, what you will not pursue, you will never possess. If you're not willing to step out of yourself, you will never possess it. And I took those words, literally quit my job, started my own business, 
and went from there, knowing that God was going to make me a success. But see, many times, as she said, we are waiting on God to give us microwave blessings. Or in other words, we want the blessings. We don't want any trials and tests. Just give me the blessing. Show me how to get to the blessed side, but I don't want to have to go through all of that other stuff. But see, we have to understand that God could easily do that, but then we would forget all about him and how to acknowledge him and give him the credit for our success. We would think that we did it. I think it says that in Deuteronomy, you know, that when you get to this land and you become successful and you've got the house that sits up on the hill and you've got the many vehicles that are sitting out on the driveway and you've got the bank account that seems to be overflowing and, and, and a big family and all these other things that are added in, don't forget who gave them to you. Don't forget that it was God. You know, and pretty soon we start to think, well, I did this. I built that house. I bought them vehicles. I worked hard. I built that bank account. I, you know, that's my family and my sons, my daughters. You know, we began to think it's all about us. But as she said that, she brought this scripture back to me. And I'm going to open it up. I know I'm being a little long here, but Jesus said, talking to the disciples, and you think about what she just made comments about, it is easier for a camel to enter through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter into the gates of heaven. Why? Because we get so caught up in ourselves and we don't acknowledge that God did it for us. We forget all about God and we are consumed with the things that we think we have accomplished. Don't forget about God. Even as the children of Israel went to the other side, which we hear of, how they got in the land, God prospered them, and then they forgot about God. She said that we cannot make a move without God. You need to really let that sink in. It doesn't matter what you want to do in life, where you want to go. We need God in our lives. She talked about how Prophet and his family moved out to California. That was a big step. Move your entire family, trusting in God that you're going to make it and succeed. I also think about how our late pastor and bishop, she goes on vacation, comes home. She told us the story many times. And Bishop tells her we're moving out west to Seattle. And we're going to pack up everything and we're moving out there. And pastor said, why? Who do we know out there? You know, this was like the Wild West, but nonetheless, they packed it all up and moved, and God took care of the rest. Also, as Sister Tracy mentioned, Prophet Elijah and myself, both unexpectedly found ourselves in position of pastoralship. It wasn't planned. It was not anticipated on my behalf. I was not looking for that, but God has a plan. Whatever move that we make in life needs to be with God. If you want to be successful, with God. If you aspire to new heights, it's with God. Don't forget God, no matter what you do. Don't forget God. God. But I want to give God the glory. Thank you, Sister Tracy, for allowing God to use you. A powerful word. But I want to take the opportunity now for those that are in the house.
you would like to share something, those that are on the Zoom will be coming back to you shortly. If you'll just raise your hand and we will know who uh, would like to say something at this time. Anybody in the house this morning? Grab the key out. Amen. Amen. Let me give you the mic, Brother Keon, so they can hear you. So um, I've been reading the Bible a lot lately. And um, so uh, I, I read the Bible a lot as a kid, you know, and um, even in general, you know, when I learned to do. And the, I read the book of Daniel so many times, and, you know, I never knew how much I really related to the king in that Bible. Not even Daniel, you know, because I know you're on the probably no part about the line and all that. That part's cool, but my favorite part's the part about the king, right? Because so so many times he like was so rude, you know, like he he, he had that dream about um the statue with the, the statue. bowling hat, yeah, in the in the in the, in the clay feet, mm -hmm. and like he, even when even when uh he had the dream, he called those people. To, to come help him figure it out and try to tell him to do something that they couldn't even do. Mm. He was going to kill all of them, right? Mm. Like, why would he do that, right? And like, Daniel, like, just give me a moment. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you the dream. So go to God and God tells him the dream, right? And even after that, he still doesn't even, he still doesn't say, okay, I'm going I'm to trust in God, right? Even though uh, some guy told him his own dream, right? Mm. Like, who, who, who in their right mind wouldn't, wouldn't believe something like that, right? Right. Like, Right, but you still don't, right? So then some some guys don't get on their knees and pray when the trumpet blows because he has to pray people have to pray for the statue, right? They they believe in God, so they're not gonna do that, right? He throws him in a pit of fire and with his own eyes he's watching and he says, he said, I think he said, um, was was it there three people we threw in there? Right. 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 And he's see he's seeing this, right? Right. He's still he's, he's still, still not, not really he's still not living, you know, he's seen it with his own eyes, right? That's right. So so the next, right, he has another dream, right, about the trees, right? Mm -hmm. Daniel tells him his own dream for a second time, right? And he's all like, Oh, okay. You know, he's starting to get a little shaky now. And then <laughs> and then he hears the voice. He tells him he's gonna live in the wilderness. Now, even after living in the wilderness, he he has to live like an animal to finally figure out that God is real and God is our Savior and Jesus died on the cross. That's right. That's right. You know, but, you know, it's just reminding myself because, like, I, I've seen all types of stuff in church. I've seen all types of stuff outside. I've seen so many people get help. And I still was like, nah, I'm going to still do this. I'm still, like, I still have questions. So it's just like a lot of people, a lot of people are like that, you know, and I'm just glad that, like, I, like, I didn't have to go through all, all that. That's stuff. right. That's right. You know, that, that's yeah. just what I wanted to say. Amen. 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 That's powerful. Amen. Super good. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Tracy, for that wonderful word. It was awesome. Um, I just want to say, just a reminder. A constant reminder. The That's word right. has been that we've been getting is just a constant reminder. Constant reminder. And that we have to continue to look to God for it uh, and step out. Step out on faith and continue to let Him guide us. Don't do it on our own because we can't do it on our own. We have to just step out on faith. And trust him and watch that's and right. see what he does. That's right. That's right. That's right. You. That's right. you want to say anything? <laughs> you know, praise God. When you get this mic in your hand, you tend to forget everything that you want to say. You went over everything, Pastor Harris, but I want to thank God for Sister Tracy for bringing out such a powerful lesson because it was for every one of us. But you know, what went to, you know, what came hard was that Brother Keon, when he came out, he was the first one that said something and that, that's the thought that came to me that I wish more little young adults were here to hear that word because it was a great word of advice, of, you know, that we all needed when we were young and to go out into this world. And I also like the part she brought up 
about her personal life, how long it took her that time when you read uh, your, your start about your job, I think. Yeah. And uh, yeah. and I said probably a year, probably you know. Yeah, well. And um, you can't move without God, and and I just thank God for the the testimony that you gave about that. Like I said, I told you every time you get this mic, you forget. And you know, as you're up there teaching, you know, it's just so much that come to you. That and then you brought up the history, um, Pastor. That I wish so many young adults were here because there's so many that don't know the things that you talked about. And um, and then, it, like I said, it was so much you brought out an awesome message. Awesome. And I'm hoping that most of the parents that are on here, and I am, but all we can do is tell our young adults to go back and listen to this word. And I'm praying that the more adults who have their young adults go back and listen to this word. It was powerful. I thank God for you. Yeah. You want to say anything? <laughs> well, praise the Lord. I, if anything, I just want to say good job to Lord God for allowing the Lord to use you. It's really a beautiful thing to just sit back and, and witness the Lord use the men and women of God as they go forward, you know, because the Lord pulls out what is in you. And if you are courageous enough, you know, the Lord to just use you and you flow with it. And it's a beautiful thing to witness. You know what God is doing and the power. It just it comes out. And so, so praise the Lord. Good job. Thank you. Amen. 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 You know, I would just share with the people as well. You know, one what Brother Keon uh, remarked about that was powerful, Brother yes, Keon. And you know what it tells me, or is this, is that what is it going to take for God to do to get your attention? to get you to believe that he is who he said he is. Is he going to have to treat you like he did Nebuchadnezzar? You know, you know almost turn you into the uh, an animal, go out and eat grass of the field like a cow. You know, he, he tried to share with him so many times who he was, but he just kind of just brushed it off and kept on being who he was. That's you exactly know, what I was. Yeah, well, and there's a lot of us that are that. We see the power of God, and we kind of recognize it, but then we still keep on doing what we've been doing, or really don't take it for real. But God is real. You know, but the great thing about God is that he is patient with us so that we can get it. But I want to open it up at this time for those that are on the Zoom. Pastor Hackett, are you there? Would you like to share with us this morning? Praise the Lord. Can you hear me? I hear you, sir. Amen. God bless you this morning. Sister Tracy, Amen. that was an awesome, awesome, awesome word this morning. You know, sometimes we have to not just realize that on the other side of, of a test or something that stands before us to get to the victory or the promise of God, we can't be afraid to step into the water. Like you said, they were on the bank of the, to cross over for a long time. Sometimes it could go from three days to three months to three years. You'd be sitting somewhere and, and the promise is looking you right in the face. And all you got to do is just step out into it and understand that God is there, not only for the first step, but every step really powerful word this morning and and i thank you for allowing god to just bless you to drop as many nuggets as you put on us this morning but i just want to also say that sometimes when you do step out or you do make a jump and you may not even have a parachute but you know that you're going to land properly mm -hmm. and god is going to give you the favor that not only that it takes to have the courage as you said to step out and believe, but that it will be accomplished through you making the steps necessary to move forward or to, to take a leap of faith and know that you're gonna land. Because sometimes people have opportunity, they have, uh, you know, God makes a way. And sometimes it'd be the hardest thing for some of, some of us to recognize truly what it is and what God is trying to do through what he's given us to be to be and to become 
through what he has already prepared us to accomplish. Does that make sense? Because if the promise is already promised and all we have to do is step out and make that leap, we just we should know that God is with us. Not only is he with us, but he, like I said a minute ago, he has already given us what we need to accomplish to set up and, and set up camp or, you know, however, to, to sustain us and cover us. That's why the camp is so important. Once we get there, well, imagine how them people felt when they were camped out next to the river for all those days. And then and, and the promise was right in front of them. They had to pitch tents. They probably had to go forage some some trees and and, and everything else to, to find covering. And all they had to do was step out and walk across. I don't know. I just thank God for the word today, because as even, you know, sometimes, like you said, when we prepare to do something and don't know what's on the other side of it, but we know that at that point we have to jump. You know what I mean? I remember when Bishop came to Seattle and he came back and he told us that we were moving. It was like, what? Like we've been on road trips. We go to Florida every year. Like but when we moved, when he said we were going, that was it. It wasn't no big family meeting. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was just one of those things where he said, I went there <laughs> and, and you know what he told us? He said, we're going to love it. You know, he just made, made it feel comfortable and nobody, I mean, uh, traveling unknown for four or five days across the country, you know what I mean? And then getting to Seattle and, and experiencing all that we did and still do is a part of that journey that continues. So, you know, like pastor said, I don't think either one of us could flip a coin and, and see where we would end up this last year or so in the position that we're in, but we have to give God grace. We have to put God in, in, in a higher regard because he has put us in a higher regard. So it's just all a part of the journey. And I thank you for the way that you brought it out because so many things we can overlook through the process, even going through it that, that are, a blessing that are make the the making of a even greater story and journey. I thank you for the word today. This really reflective for me, you know, in the way that you brought out and some of the things that it makes me think of. So I thank you for the word today. God continue to bless you and give you the understanding and the knowledge and the way to break his word like he did. It was a great job. I thank you for it this morning. God bless you. You know. That was just awesome. Awesome. Yeah, thank you, Pastor. Appreciate yeah, it. No problem. Uh, anybody else that would like to? Uh, looks like Sister Felicia. Go ahead. Uh, praise the Lord. Can you hear me okay? We hear you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Tracy, for that awesome word. I got so many uh, great things out of it. Um, uh, a couple of things that really stood out to me um, when you first began to minister, you said, see this in the spirit, uh, in the spiritual realm, um, when you were talking as, as, as we go through. And I was thinking of how, as long as we're on this side of glory, we're always going to go through trials and tribulations, whether we are walking with God or not, but I'd rather be walking with the Lord and going through than without the Lord. Amen. Because we know that tests and trials, those that are in, in Christ, come to make us stronger. Um, but there is there is this that when God tells us to do something, and we're connected to God, and we hear from God, and we're walking with God, and we're hearing from God, as we take that step, God is moving in the supernatural, taking care of things, ordering the steps as we go. And yes, we may go through seasons and it may take longer than we expected and there may be obstacles, but we have to know that we know that we know if God said it, that we could take it to the bank, as Bishop used to say. If God said it, he will bring us through it. If God said it, if God did it, he's with us. God is moving in the supernatural and it will come to pass. So thank you so much for that encouraging word. It encouraged me in my life and all that's going on right now. And I believe God. God said it, and he's going to bring me through it. And that's, and that's that. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Felicia. Powerful words of encouragement. Anybody else would like to share anything this morning? Uh, Deacon Rodney, go ahead. Amen. Can you hear me? We hear you. Praise God. Um, thank you, Sister Tracy. Um, such a powerful word. Um, how else could you make it in life with without the word going forth like it has been going? Um, and what got me is uh, you said uh, wet. Let me say it right: wet feet or wet foot. <laughs> one foot in or whatever the case is you want to put dip your feet in but you and you jumped in so into uh what god has given you so um that was powerful because a lot of us um god has given us something that we ain't we we may have dipped our feet or whatever the case is and not jumped into what god's plan is for us in our life and the thing i want to say is uh such an encouraging word is if God did it, I mean, gave it to you, and God did what He did already. Why not um, just Job go ahead and jump all the way in and uh, be obedient to what God's giving you, so that you could be prosperous and you can, um, you can not, uh, what should I say, struggle the way that you struggle and go through the way you go through, but just go through the way that. God would have you to go through for your life necessary. And so that was powerful. Um, we got to remind ourselves that God is in control and and that's all that matters. And the other thing, I would just want to uh, encourage um, um, your young people. Um, man, I'm encouraged, young man, that you're, you're, you're uh, being obedient and you're listening to God. Um, because it's not it's not easy, um, and I just want to just tell you, just stay in the fold and keep continue to to come into the house and um and get fed because that's what it's all about. It's about our our future, our not young. And I'm 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 so happy to see you there, Brother Keon. And um, happy Father's Day to every uh, man in the house, um, every brother that's a part of the ministry. Um, I just want to just Thank God for the blessings that he has put around me. And so I want to acknowledge that, uh, that to today. Uh, happy Father's Day to you, brothers. And powerful words, Sister Tracy. Once again, I mean, how else could God give it but the way that he gave it? And um, let him continue to use you because uh, it's, it's powerful. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Deacon. Powerful words. Uh, we've got time for one more. If anybody else has anything that they would like to share. Anybody else on the Zoom? Well, again, a powerful, powerful word. I thank God for um, using it this morning, Sister Tracy. Uh, breaking the bread of life. There we go. Um, and I would encourage the saints to go back, look at the video again, whether you do it on our website or on the YouTube, refresh yourself uh, with the word that was spoken this morning and let it be an encouragement to you. You know, what, you know another thought that comes to me that happened with the children of Israel, I'm sure that many generations after uh, the children had made that crossing and, and drove out the inhabitants and, and set up their homes and had become successful. Those generations really did not understand the things that the prior generations had to go through for their success. Now, it's kind of like sometimes here, we hear the testimony of different ones that God is just richly pouring out and increasing them, but we don't understand the path or the shoes that has taken them to that point of life, what they had to go through to get there. 
because uh, there's sacrifice, there's trials, there's tests, there's you know a lot of doing without, as Sister Tracy had brought up. It's just not instant success. There's a, a process to this. And, 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 and if you keep God at the forefront of it, he'll bring you into it. But that's the key to the message is to keep God first. So I thank God for the word that was given to us this morning and, and pray that God will continue to use you in a great and a mighty way, Sister Tracy, continue to pour into you, continue to prosper your new business that you're in, all that he's doing in your life. There's a, a purpose to it. And if we keep him first, he'll do the rest. Amen. At this time, we're going to transition a little bit. We're going to take up our Sunday school offering. And those that are on the Zoom, uh, you can join with us by going to our website, www.greaterlight.org, and clicking on the giving tab. It'll give you a couple of options of how you can participate. Just want to let you know that your offerings are greatly appreciated. It's what helps us to provide this service, especially if you're not here and able to make it to the building, you can still join in fellowship with us. But it takes money to pay the people at Zoom, to pay our bill, and rent, and all the other expenses. So we greatly appreciate your offerings if you would help us out this morning. And then those that are in the house, if I'll ask you to stand with me. Those that are on the Zoom, if you will give reverence as we pray and close out this morning. Father God, we just wanted to just come to you first and foremost, thanking you for who you are. We thank you for your holy presence in our services this morning. We thank you for using your servant, Sister Tracy, to break the bread of life, to feed your sheep, to help your people. We thank you for using her this morning. Now we pray a special blessing over her. Continue to pour out your precious anointing over her. Continue to give her depths of wisdom and knowledge and understanding of your holy word. That she might be able to rightly divide the word of truth and minister to your sheep, I pray. I also ask, Lord, bless the words that we have heard. Let them fall on good and fertile ground, that it might spring forth as much pleasing fruit in your eyes, I pray. Now I ask for your blessings over the offerings that have been given here this morning. Bless the hands of everyone that participated. Bless those that were not able to give. that they will be able to do so the next time around, we pray. Let it be for the building of your kingdom and let there be more than enough to do that, I pray. Now I ask, take us from this part of the service, looking with great expectations of all that you will bring forth in the service to come and keeping each and every one of us until the next time we would come together for prayer and Sunday school. And we thank you again in Jesus' name, amen. 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 So we're going to take a short intermission. And for those that are on the Zoom, we will rejoin our services at about 20 minutes till. You're welcome to stay on, or if you do get off, make sure you get back on at 20 minutes till. And we will pick up our services again. Amen. Amen.